I'm Kristen Miller. I am president and CEO of the Goleta Valley Chamber of Commerce, representing 450 businesses and 30,000 jobs in the Goleta Valley. We are very happy to be presenting this event to you today as a, in co-sponsorship with the Santa Barbara Chamber of Commerce, who, and Ken Opplinger, their CEO, is here today and will give a closing remark as well. Thank you to Bacara for this perfect spot. It's a great setting for an event like this. And also thank you to TV Santa Barbara, who is in the booth in the back, and they are filming today's event for broadcast later. Because of that, we ask that there be no other unauthorized videotaping of the event. Of course, we thank the candidates for being here and um, being so prepared to talk with, between business and government about the important things in our future. Uh, we have other elected officials with us today. I hope I have seen everyone out there having breakfast. So let me start by thanking uh, from the city of Goleta council members, Ed Easton, Paula Perotti, and Jim Farr. Would you guys stand up and wave? Thank you. And from the city of Santa Barbara, Kathy Murillo. Would you stand up? That's Kathy. From the Goleta West Sanitary District, Craig Geyer and Eva Turinchalk. With that, I will introduce our moderator today, who is Peter Brown of Brownstein Hyatt Farber Schreck. I did that very well. <laughs> Peter is chair of our Issue and Policy Roundtable, which many of you know is our luncheon series on hot topics and important business issues in Goleta. This, uh, presentation today is a part of that series, and we thank Peter for his energy and volunteerism to help us get this done. Thank you. Wow, those lights are bright. They are. Um, good morning, everybody. I'm uh, Peter Brown. I'm the moderator for today's event. Thank you for attending. Um, Galita uh, Chamber puts on an issue of policy roundtable. Basically, we try to every month to address issues of concern to the business and general community, and uh, we thank you for attending today. I'd like to uh, just make a few brief comments uh, to follow up on what Kristen said. This will be, uh, uh, is being recorded by TV Santa Barbara. It will be re-televised over the public access stations, so no, please turn off all cell phones and pagers, and there's no uh, recording uh, video or audio uh, permitted um, other than through TV Santa Barbara. Also, as the candidates speak, I'd like to ask, I uh, want to maintain order here today, uh, no applause, no cheers, no boos, no nothing. Let's let the candidates uh, speak for themselves. Um, I think Kristen said that uh, we may have some time for questions, so if you, um, uh, I will briefly review the questions we're going to have today, but if you have a question that hasn't been posed, write it down on a piece of paper, pass it down to the front. Um, we will try to uh, uh, make sense out of the questions and uh, if we have time to ask them, uh, we'll ask them. Um, I'd like to briefly introduce each of our uh, candidates today, uh, starting with uh, Janet Wolf. Uh, Janet is a Southern California native. Uh, she earned her BA degree from UCSB and a master's degree in teaching credential from UCLA. Uh, she worked for, um, I think, about 20 years in the area of vocational rehabilitation, had her own uh, business, and worked with uh, many employers uh, through the Tri-Counties in terms of helping people return to work. Uh, she first entered public life uh, as uh, working on the Goleta School Board, which she had three terms commencing in 1993. She was then elected to the Board of Supervisors in 2006 and re-elected in 2010. She serves on, as the board's representative on a number of boards and commissions, including the Santa Barbara County Retirement Board, uh, LAFCO, uh, Santa Barbara County Association of Governments, and the Community Corrections Partnership, which is an entity that oversees the AB 109 criminal justice realignment. Uh, Roger Aceves uh, was first elected to the Goleta City Council in 2006. He was re-elected in 2010. Uh, he has served as mayor on two occasions. He serves on a number of um, city committees, including the Energy Green Issues Committee, Public Safety and Emergency Preparedness. Uh, he also serves on a number of regional um, committees, including the California Joint Powers Insurance Authority, 
the uh, SB CAG, uh, Santa Barbara County Association of Governments, uh, LAFCO, and the South Coast Gang Task Force. Uh, Mr. Savas worked in law enforcement for 32 years before becoming a public official. Uh, he retired in May 2007, working for both the Santa Barbara County Sheriff's Department and the Police Department. He's a graduate of the FBI National Academy, and he also uh, is active in a number of uh, nonprofit uh, community organizations. So how we're going to proceed today, we will start with an opening statement. Super, uh, Supervisor Wolf will begin with her opening statement. Each candidate can make a statement of up to five minutes. We then have five prepared questions which have been provided to the candidates in advance. These deal with the topics of uh, Goleta Beach, the county budget, Measure M, uh, North, South, county issues, and revenue neutrality. So those are the five questions that will be posed. Each uh, candidate will have three minutes to um, speak to uh, those questions. If we then have time for questions from the audience, we will take them, keeping in mind that we want to get out of here at 10.30. Uh, and we will terminate this at 10.30. So please keep that in mind. And then when all questions have been asked, um, the candidates will have an opportunity to make an a closing statement of up to five minutes. There's no rebuttal in any of these. Opening statement, closing statement. Response to question by one candidate, response to question by the other candidate. Uh, I think that's it. Anything else I need to address, you think? Okay, so in that, uh, with that being said, uh, we'll now have the opening statement. I, Supervisor Wolf will give the first opening statement. Thank you, um, Peter, for your opening remarks. And I want to thank all of you for being here this morning. And I want to particularly thank the, the two chambers for hosting this event. This is a very important election. And the, the outcome of this election uh, will be felt far and wide. And that is one of the main reasons why I am running for re-election. Um, I have a proven background and experience to continue my work and work with my constituents in a very effective way. As you just heard, I ran a successful business for over 20 years and I had offices in Santa Barbara and Santa Maria. My husband Harvey, who thank you for being here today, my husband Harvey and I uh, have been married for 37 years. We raised our three daughters in the Goleta Valley. All three girls attended public schools. I served three terms on the Goleta School Board. Eight years ago, I was elected to the Board of Supervisors to represent the second district. I ran for the Board of Supervisors because I care deeply about this community, its residents, the environment, and the economy. I entered my office as the national economy was, was crumbling. I worked hard to balance the budget by cutting costs and renegotiating contracts while enhancing public safety, emergency preparedness, and vital services. That's why I have been endorsed by our city and county firefighters. I fought for budget workshops for greater transparency in decision making and more strategic long-term fiscal planning. We reduced our workforce. We reformed the pension system. We reduced unfunded liabilities and more strategic um, reserve. I'm proud to have earned the endorsement of our independently elected auditor and treasurer, Bob Geis and Harry Hagan. We invested in programs that provide alternatives to gangs. I'm pleased to report that both juvenile and adult crime are down and I'm proud to be endorsed by the Deputy District Attorneys Association. We continue to invest in repairing our roads and infrastructure. As the economy improves, we are addressing our backlog in road and building maintenance. Last year, we allocated $14 million, and we are currently continuing to work on a strategy to increase that funding annually. We have a lot of work to do, and you can be sure that I will be there to make the responsible decisions. I worked with many of you on the update of the Eastern Goleta Valley Community Plan, 
which balanced private property rights and the need for housing with the protection of open space, agriculture, and natural resources. I supported the citizen-led initiative to protect Goleta's remaining agricultural lands. I've worked to create good jobs, including advocating the Empower program, which began in Santa Barbara and has now expanded to San Luis Obispo and Ventura counties. And I'm working with the Santa Barbara Chamber and our county CEO to provide funding for a countywide economic development program. And I advocated for the best plan to protect Goleta Beach Park for future generations, winning unanimous support at the Board of Supervisors. I look forward to working with the Coastal Commission to gain approval for this plan. I'm proud to have the endorsement of Goleta Mayor Michael Bennett and Council Members Paula Perotti and Ed Easton, Santa Barbara Mayor Helene Schneider and Council Members Greg Hart, Bendy White and Kathy Murillo. They know that I work hard and that I focus and work with them on important regional issues. And I'm proud of the hundreds of people who have supported my almost 20 years of elected service. They know that they can trust me. They know that I'm responsive. They know that I am a hard-working elected official. And they know that I can be honest, and I am honest with them. Thank you very much for being here this morning. Now we'll have the opening statement by Mr. Aceves. Thank you, Peter. Um, I also want to thank the Chambers for sponsoring this, and also I want to thank the Bacar for hosting at their beautiful hotel. Uh, my name is Roger Aceves, and I am running for County Supervisor. I've been a longtime member of this community, third generation in Santa Barbara. I graduated from Santa Barbara High School, and as Peter mentioned, I spent over 30 years in law enforcement patrolling both the county and the city. I moved to Goleta, where we raised our son, and, and been involved in many community uh, programs, such as I was actually a PTA president for La Patera School when our son was there. I was a board member of the Earl Warren Showgrounds, appointed by Greg Davis, and I was the uh, president of the Fiesta in 2001. I have a record of service in our, in our, private, in our community. I was elected to city council eight years ago. I have served as mayor twice and I'm proud of the work that I and our colleagues have accomplished in our city. We've rolled up our sleeves and we've done more with less. We get the job done. We've helped local businesses create good local jobs in Goleta. Our unemployment rate is one of the lowest in Santa Barbara County. The Goleta Entrepreneurial Magnet and our dedication to the Chamber of Commerce are prime examples of our council and my commitment to local businesses. We've run a fiscally responsible government despite the revenue neutrality agreement that has taken tens of million dollars from the city of Goleta. The city has right-sized government by maintaining base levels of service and contracting out some city functions to save taxpayer dollars. We cleaned up oil debris on our beaches and fought developments that did not fit our community. We're managing carefully projects to stay uh, in line with our general plan, a plan conceived to balance our community and preserve our quality of life. And vital to our quality of life, we have one of the safest cities in California. That's a record that speaks for itself. That's the kind of leadership I bring to the Board of Supervisors, leadership that gets things done, and that's why I'm running. So far on the campaign, campaign trail, we've knocked on thousands of doors. One thing is clear, voters are ready for a change. Voters are looking for leadership, voters are looking for accountability and transparency in government. I'd be honored to have your support and I'm excited today to engage in this forum. Thank you very much. Okay, now we'll begin with the first question uh, and Ms. Wolf will um, begin uh, to provide the first response to this question. Now that the supervisors have removed their support for Galita Beach 2.0, the final decision on how 
and whether Goleta Beach Park will be preserved lies with the California Coastal Commission. What steps would you advocate that the county take before the Coastal Commission, and what arguments would you make to the Coastal Commission? Ms. Wolf will go first. Uh, thank you, uh, Peter. Um, as all of you know, the issue of Goleta Beach Park has been an ongoing issue uh, for decades. And to the issue of getting things done, that's exactly what happened at the Board of Supervisors approximately one month ago. Um, I was very pleased to get unanimous support for my motion to finally move this project forward. Anyone who knows me and my record and my approach to making complex decisions is well aware that I never base my vote on anything but the facts and the evidence presented before me, including hearing from my constituents. I carefully studied this EIR and its alternatives. It's important that folks understand that this was the first EIR that actually studied in depth a variety of alternatives to how we would deal with the unpermitted rocks at Goleta Beach Park. Frankly, the no project alternative that I proposed and was approved was the only logical choice. I have always advocated for the protection of the beach and the park. The problem was to find the best solution. It takes more than just saying, save the beach. It takes evidence and a lot of hard work to be able to recommend a solution. Now, as we move forward, I believe it's important that we speak with one strong and positive voice as we approach the Coastal Commission. We finally have the science and not the rhetoric to support the decision, and it's time for the community to come together. I will be monitoring our staff's completion of the permit application, which should be completed in the next few months, and I look forward to seeing this permitting process through to successful completion. Mr. Aceves. Thank you, Peter. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the Chamber of Commerce, the Friends to Save Goleta Beach Park, and many citizens who responded to our call to action on this important issue. We have saved the park, but our work is not over. Now is the time to prepare for the Coastal Commission hearing where we ask them to keep the rocks in place. The emergency permit that was issued to the county allowed for the county to come back and ask the rocks be left permanent. It is unfortunate that it took as many years, it took as many years and millions of dollars to get to this one place, and that's keeping the rock revetments in place. Our request to make the rocks permanent is not without precedence. Currently, the city of Port Wayne Amy is preparing to make the same request to protect their parks. The revetment worked. We must keep them in place. And I joined Mrs. Wolf. We need to go together on this and convince the Coastal Commission that we need to keep the rock revetments, and it's about protecting the park. And that's what we all want. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question um, uh, is as follows. Public sector budgeting, especially in a time of limited revenues, is undoubtedly a matter of choosing priorities. What are your three top pri priorities for the county budget, and how do you believe these priorities can help drive growth in our economy? What do you believe are the biggest threats to the county's economy? Mr. Aceves will go first. Thank you. I only have to look to the examples that's been what's been working in the city of Goleta and how we manage our budget. We have learned that it's important to do more with less. We have done that. We have balanced a budget as the law requires. We have done that. What we have done, which the law does not require, is that we end up in the black creating a strong reserve. My priorities are this. Number one, my priority has and always will be public safety. This has served us well in Goleta. We have a great contract with the Sheriff's Department, and we've been recognized as being one of the top 50 cities in California as the safest cities. Number two, it's an investment in our infrastructure. As I walk the neighborhoods, especially in the unincorporated areas of the second district, the number one complaint 
is the condition of the roadways. I ask you to compare and contrast. Look at the city of Goleta streets and compare it with the county. The Goleta City Council has invested millions of dollars in the maintenance of our roadways. We understand that the longer you take or you wait in, in maintenance, the more it's going to cost you. And number three, as we do here in Goleta, we need to make sure that the county government is right-sized. We must maintain base level of service and contracting out some of the functions to save tax taxpayer dollars. It's worked very effectively in Goleta. We have 30,000 residents and 54 employees. Thank you. Ms. Wolf. Thank you. Um, throughout my time on the Goleta School Board and as well as my seven years on the Board of Supervisors, I am reminded that uh, the budget is a values document. And this is especially true when facing challenging economic times as a nationwide recession hit in 2008. As, as a board, we took a measured approach to developing our budgets. We went from a $72 million deficit and we are currently looking at a surplus this year as we go into budget deliberations. We accomplished this with the help of all our employee groups, which saved the county over $50 million since 2008. We eliminated positions mostly through attrition, and we enacted pension reform before the state enacted PEPRA, which is the state pension reform law. I'm proud to have spearheaded our early budget workshops so that we have the opportunity to hear from our department heads, our employees, and the public. This ensured that our budget process was open and transparent. Through all of this, the county has maintained the highest bond rating for a county at AA+. We've increased our strategic reserve. We've decreased our unfunded pension liabilities while maintaining our essential public health and safety services and also finding additional money to allocate to our libraries, our veterans, and our most vulnerable. So one of the biggest threats to our budget is the national and global economy. But closer to home, we must ensure that special interests do not diminish the quality of life that we all cherish. We must maintain this special place as we know it. It's one of the biggest attractions to our residents, our tourists, and our businesses. Thank you. Uh, before we go on to the next question, I'd like to, uh, if the audience, members of the audience, have um, a, a different question that they would like to ask, please write it down on a piece of paper, and uh, there are uh, personnel on each side of the aisle who can pick them up, bring them down, and if we have time, which we may well have time, uh, we will then uh, pose those questions to the candidates. So again, we will not be taking questions from the floor directly, but if you will write your question down, pass it forward to our personnel on the side, uh, we will see if we can get those questions asked. We'll now move on to our next question. Recent decisions by the Board of Supervisors have raised, raised the perception among some that there is once again a 3-2 split, 3 South County, 2 North County, on the board, and some believe that North County issues are given um, inadequate attention by a South County majority on the board. Is this a fair perception? And what, if anything, should be done about it? Ms. Wolf. <clears throat> Thank you for that, that question. Um, if anyone was to look at the record, of the voting record at the Board of Supervisors, uh, folks would find that at least, if not more than 95% of our votes are unanimous. In general, we all work very well together. We work together for the good of the county. So once again, it's important to separate rhetoric from reality. We've spent much time in the past few years developing a plan to staff the North County Jail. In fact, I had accompanied the sheriff to Sacramento when we first asked to be considered for the AB 900 jail funding grant, which was ultimately approved. People can continue to attempt to divide us, but that is just not my style, and I won't go there. I have a good working relationship with all of my colleagues, but of course we differ on issues. That 
are of particular importance to me and my constituents. I feel strongly that we need to protect the quality of our air and our water and to ensure that our community plans are adhered to and that regulations in our community, throughout our community, throughout the county are enforced fairly and consistently. Mr. Aceves. Thank you. I, I believe this is a fair perception. Uh, North County issues are, are, they feel, are not given adequate attention. At times, frustration has led to discussions anew of a North and South County split. I'm opposed to the split, but what we need are supervisors that represent the entire county, that are true and transparent. But here in Goleta, we share same of the frustrations that the North County has, uh, is feeling. That's one of the reasons why we became a city, because we felt that we weren't getting adequate attention. And then we became a city, and we ended up with a voter-approved revenue neutrality agreement. The contract with the county called for a renegotiation at the five-year mark. Our first city council decided not to uh, have that discussion, to discuss the intended or the unintended consequences of that voter-approved initiative. As a consequence, our city council twice now has tried to renegotiate, once in 2008 and again in 2013. And neither time have we been successful as a board of supervisors that walk, walked away and not discuss the issue uh, to a conclusion. But what that means is that 50% of our property tax and 40% of our sales tax goes to the county forever. No other city in this county has that obligation. Imagine if the city of Santa Barbara had to give up 50% of their property tax or 40% of their sales tax. This is a, a terrible agreement, and it's one that's spoken about throughout the state with new cities that incorporate as an example of what not to do. We are being doubly taxed. We pay our fair share like everybody else has. We just pay a lot more at the end of the day. Thank you. Our next question. Do you support Measure M? which is the proposed county facilities maintenance initiative. How important should infrastructure funding be in the county's budget? Overall, do you feel that Measure M reflects voter frustration with spending priorities at the county level? Mr. Aceves. Thank you, Peter. Um, our constituents are, vis are, are, are visual. They see the conditions of our roadways. They see the conditions of our infrastructure, and they're very frustrated that our spending of the spending priorities of this Board of Supervisors. What's amazing to me is that we need to have a measure on the ballot telling the Board of Supervisors to do their job. So again, let's compare and contrast on what the city of Goleta has done and what the county has done. I just talk about the pavement condition, that's the most visible. But talk about the budgeting, talk about the fact that we end up in the black because we know that we need to do more with less. And if we don't have the money to do it, we don't spend it. However, we prioritize public safety, roadway maintenance, and, and, and our infrastructure with our parks. So that's, it's, it's very frustrating to me that we have to have a voter initiative. I understand why this came about. And hopefully at the end of the day, the message to our constituents will be, Board of Supervisors, you need to relook at your prioritization. Thank you. Ms. Wolf. Uh, thank you, Peter. Well, our constituents are indeed visual, but our constituents are also very smart. Um, Measure M is a serious threat to the county budget and I don't support its implementation. Of course, we all want to maintain our roads, our buildings, our infrastructure, and not increase taxes. However, the reality is that our county is just beginning to recover from a recession, and this is not the time to hijack our budget process. The fact is, many local governments are putting more, uh, 
like many local governments, we are putting more money into maintaining our roads and infrastructure as the economy improves. And we continue to balance the many competing priorities. Folks need to understand that if this initiative passes, the Board of Supervisors will be required to pay annually between 18 and $22 million out of our discretionary fund to ensure that we are in compliance with Measure M. You can't, on the one hand, support public safety, while on the other hand, completely disseminate all of our safety departments. You might want to have a nice new um, library, but unless you have librarians to fill it, it makes no sense. Just yesterday, Sheriff Brown said that he is not supportive of this measure because of the negative impact it will have on his department. And I want to add that as we talk about pavement preservation index and how we are being measured, it's important to note that the unincorporated area of the second district has a PCI, and, and by the way, I represent 30,000 folks in the unincorporated area. We have a PCI very close, if not the same, as the entire city of Goleta. So for the city of San, for the unincorporated area of Santa Barbara, we're actually doing a very good job of ensuring that our roads are being maintained, and we're doing it in a very thoughtful way. Thank you. Before we uh, go on to our last formal question, I'd like to again um, ask if the public, members of the public who are sitting out here, have questions they would like posed to the candidates, please write them down on a piece of paper, uh, give them to one of the uh, uh, members who is here on the side to accept them. They will bring them up to the front, and uh, we should have time to be able to pose those questions to the candidates and hear their responses. Now, now I'd like to go to the last formal uh, question. Uh, cityhood proponents and the county signed a revenue neutrality agreement as part of the incorporation process for the city of Goleta. The agreement requires that certain revenues generated in the city of Goleta be transferred to the county in perpetuity. Some say that this is unfair. How do you propose resolving this issue? Ms. Wolf. Thank you. Um, this is a very complicated and multifaceted issue that originated, of course, when the city incorporated. Revenue neutrality is a relatively new state law that mandates that fiscal agreements upon incorporations um, should be neutral to both the city and the county. And that is a high bar to reach. And perhaps that's one reason why we don't see as many incorporations as we had in the past. The Goleta Revenue Neutrality Agreement was established after an independent fiscal analysis and after voter approval that occurred in 2001. The fact is, during the first Revenue Neutrality Agreement negotiations, the county forgave a $1.5 million loan that had originally been um, offered to the city. So there had been some progress during that first negotiation. We didn't walk away. The second negotiation, period of negotiation, recently occurred. And the county uh, was obliged to participate in those negotiations. We had the understanding with the city that those negotiations would be done in good faith and they would be done in confidence. Negotiations did take place, but sometimes as happens in negotiations, there was no agreement. Unfortunately, the use of the revenue neutrality agreement is now being used as a political threat. Attempting to influence this race is certainly not indicative of the good faith that is expected in all forms of negotiation. Mr. Aceves. Thank you. Let's, let's talk about the facts of the agreement. When it came before LAFCO, they had to do a financial analysis. The financial analysis stated to make the county whole would require a payment of $3.2 million a year. The county, I give them credit, instead of making a flat dollar amount, made it a percentage. Percentage of our bed tax, 
percentage of our property tax and percentage of our sales tax. By making it a percentage, the $3.2 million, do the math, 12 years, is, it pales in comparison to the $80 million that we give them in 12 years. $80 million that this city could use to help, we could have done Old Town twice, if not three times. Uh, it's money that our citizens paid and deserve to be, and deserve to remain within our city. <clears throat> Separately, we pay for a sheriff through a contract, fire through a benefit district. So to say that the county needs $80 million um, is, is, not, is not acceptable. Our council holds the elimination of this agreement as a top priority. It's not political rhetoric. It's a fact of life. We did attempt to negotiate in 2008 that 1.5 million was a loan that the county required to give us upon becoming a city. We had put money aside to pay him back but the negotiations did say, well, we'll forgive you for that. So they did, did forgive us of the 1.5, but I think the year they forgave us the 1.5, I think our bill to them was around seven or $8 million. So where's the balance? Enough is enough. This is the only agreement of its kind in the state of California. And that for that reason, it needs to go. Because like I mentioned earlier, this is an example of what not to do as other cities negotiate. And the thing that this contract has that other cities that did incorporate have, this contract does not have an end date. Many of the contracts with new incorporated cities have an end date. Ours goes on forever, forever. We'll give them 50% of our property tax and 40% of our sales tax. Where is that just? Thank you. Well, I should have known, given the high intelligence and political acumen of our collected public out here, that we get some good questions. We did get some good questions. Uh, and these are pop questions. Candidates don't know what they are. We didn't until about five minutes ago. So uh, I'm going to pose them now. Uh, Mr. Aceves will give the first answer. Do you support the increase of the county transient occupancy tax to 12%? And what are your priorities for use of any increased funds? The answer to the question is yes. Uh, most cities in the county are at 12%. The Board of Supervisors decided not to do it at the last time they had a chance to raise it. But I understand they're talking about it as possibly they're doing it in the future. But this money should go into economic development as we do in Goleta. It should go into partnerships with the chambers as we do in Goleta. We have partnered with the Goleta Chamber to brand our city, to help bring people to our city. And we have also partnered with the Goleta Entrepreneurial Magnet Program to encourage entrepreneurs, those young graduates coming out of UCSB that want to do a startup business. It's a great opportunity to turn that money around and reinvest for economic development for our community. So yes, I do support the 12% increase. Ms. Wolf. Yes, I, I do also um, support this. Uh, this item is coming back to the Board of Supervisors and the discussion will be had, I'm, I'm certain, as to whether or not uh, the funds that are generated will go into our, our general fund or be allocated to a specific purpose. Currently, all of our TOT revenues, um, which are growing every year, they go into our general fund. Um, so um, that's, that's what the discussion uh, will take place. If it's, um, if it's allocated for a specific purpose, um, there, may be, there, there may be implications in the percentage of voters that we need to get this passed. So there's a lot of implications um, as to whether or not it goes into the general fund or it's allocated for specific issues. Thank you. Our next question, uh, what do you see as the role of the county when it comes to economic development and what do you intend to do to make it happen? Ms. Wolf. 
Well, I wish I um, was the Wizard of Oz that could just make it happen, uh, but, but I'm not. Uh, but what we, what we can do um, is look to some of our uh, large generators um, of economic, um, large economic indicators. Our agricultural industry is one of our largest, and our county has been very supportive of our agricultural industry. In fact, we have um, maintained our Williamson Act uh, contracting when the state removed the funds, so the county is continuing to do that. So it's, it's, it's looking at the industries that are um, continuing to do good things for our county. So of course, um, ag is one of those industries. Uh, tourism is another industry. And again, as I mentioned earlier, what brings uh, tourists to our, our community? It's having a beautiful environment. It's help having uh, welcoming residents uh, for those tourists. The other issue, and one of the biggest pieces of our, of our uh, discretionary income, is our home values. Um, during the recession that I had been talking about, Santa Barbara County was, if not the only one, we were maybe one or two, where we showed a positive um, property tax growth. Yes, it was small, but many other counties were seeing a decrease in their property values. That was not the case in Santa Barbara. We have to ensure that that largest base of discretionary income, our property tax base, um, is maintained, and the way um, that we do that is to meet the needs of our constituents so that they want to move here. They, um, if they start off with a condominium, they don't then move out of the area, that we have places that are, um, that are affordable for them, we have options for them, and that we have, uh, we have a safe community for them to live in. And that's one of the reasons why I think our um, Santa Barbara County shines. We have a very diverse county, and people love to come here, either as a visitor or, or a resident. And I think that's one of the ways that we continue uh, to, to hopefully, which I believe we will, see an increase in our economic status. Mr. Service. I believe the question was the role of county government in economic development. Again, I, I would remind you of what we've done in Goleta. It's just not talk. It's putting money behind our efforts to make sure that all areas of our uh, sector uh, grow, thrive, and we all benefit. We could take it one level further. We have many uh, groups like the chambers, Conference of Visitors Bureau, Film Commission. We should be meeting with them, helping them to work together for the entire county. We all benefit from the wine industry to our green jobs in Goleta. We all benefit by having a very strong economy, a safe city, and, and, a, and a place that people will actually want to come and live. Ms. Wolf. I already answered the oh. question. <laughs> I'd like to respond, but I no. we can't. <laughs> Does somebody else want to moderate up here? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right. We'll move on to the next question. Uh, energy production is a major part of the Santa Barbara County economy. Do you support this industry, and what will you do in the next four years to help strengthen it? Mr. Aceves. Energy production is very important in our community, and it covers every segment of this community. It supports a lot of good paying jobs, but what we have to do is make sure that um, all industries have a voice at the table, whether it, whether it be, it be um, wind, solar. There are many programs that we can initiate but we have to do it in a comprehensive plan so that the county, the cities, work together to make sure that they all thrive. Ms. Wolf. Can, can you repeat the question? Energy production is a major part of the Santa Barbara County economy. Do you support this industry, and what will you do in the next four years to help strengthen it? 
Okay, so energy production, uh, meaning all forms of, of energy production. And yes, I do support um, all forms of energy production, and I have been a very strong force uh, to ensure that we have more uh, solar capabilities in our, in our county. Um, we have done a lot in our county. In fact, um, we instituted a, a large megawatt, one megawatt um, solar panel behind the county jail. We're looking at additional solar um, facilities at the new North County Jail. Um, this is an area that uh, the county has been focusing on because, because what we want and what our constituents are telling us is an alternative to fossil fuels. Um, since I've been on the Board of Supervisors and I serve on APCD, it's very apparent that the fossil fuel industry um, is, is in effect a, an industry that um, is complex can be very dangerous, and one where we have seen some environmental damage. So um, we have to be very prudent. We have to look at each project as it comes before us. And I think all of you can be assured that uh, the protection of our environment, the protection of our residents, will be the forefront of my, of my decisions. Thank you. Uh, our last question uh, is as follows. There has been much discussion about major campaign contributions. Do you think the county should have contribution limits? Ms. Wolf will give the first response. Well, we do, we do have the opportunity for campaign limits, but neither myself or my opponent um, have signed those uh, voluntary limits. Let me just say one thing, though. Um, on, on campaign contributions. Yes, this is, um, you know, I, I have received a very good amount of money from our local labor unions. And this is not new news. Um, I see Dr. Secord in the audience. We had this debate four years ago. I had it four years before that. When I was on the school board, fo the teachers union supported my campaign. So this is nothing new. The fact of the matter is, is that those donations, especially in the county, represent thousands of individual employees who are supporting my campaign. And it's definitely not because they've been getting a windfall in, uh, in financial gifts. As I mentioned earlier, our unions, our employees have given up $50, 50 million dollars in benefits. So it's not just that. It's a respect for the people who do the work in our county. It's having an open uh, dialogue with the employees in our county. And as I have said over the past almost 20 years, the people who do the work in our county and who support me, I have to say it's an honor to receive that money along with the money that I get from hundreds of individual donors. But my campaign continues, uh, my opponent continues to attack me on the money that I'm getting from my unions. And I will tell you right now, I'm, I'm proud of their support and I would much rather have that support than from big industry, special interest, oil development, big developers. That, those, those, um, those corporations do not represent the values of the second district. Mr. Aceves. Thank you. Uh, the question was, do we agree with or support campaign reform? And the answer is yes. I do support campaign reform. This is not an attack on Mrs. Wolf. I leave it for, to you to decide on how uh, one union can influence an election. If you recall, in 2010, she received 150,000 from SEIU. So far, she's received 80,000. 20,000 four days before a vote on their contract. So for those reasons, we need campaign reform. Yes, there's a campaign term limit. I mean, uh, uh, you can sign to 
to limit your, your, fund, your fundraising to 88,000. But when you are sitting and voting on contracts and four days before you receive $20,000, a few days later you get 40,000, and recently there was another 20, $80,000. Um, I think there should be campaign reform. I think this board needs to stand up and say, we will only accept 20,000 or 25,000, and that's it, from any one source. There are many counties in this state that limit it to under $1,000 because they know how uh, huge contributions can influence um, decision making. And for that reason, um, I'd be glad to champion that as a member of the Board of Supervisors. We need campaign reform. We can make it reasonable. And, uh, and, and that's not going to be done um, until this board understands that the public want it. Thank you. This concludes the portion uh, of our uh, presentation today regarding questions. Uh, we, uh, well. You have the time. You said you have the time to ask your questions if the audience can't put in. I think the question is about property rights, and you ignored it. Why? Uh, Why did you ignore it? Well, it's not about property rights. It's about the right to vote. Right. Okay. Who sorted it out? I'd like to know. Uh, the Chamber of Commerce is running this presentation, and the two Chambers of Commerce and the two Chamber of Commerce representatives looked at all the questions, sorted them out uh, to uh, ensure that we had a, a range of questions, and we have arrived at the point where it's now time for the candidates to close with it. Okay. We're now going to uh, proceed to closing statements. Mr. Aceves will go first. Thank you, uh, Peter. Thank you for your expert MC. I appreciate it. Um, and thank you, everyone, for coming and spending time out of your busy schedule to come and listen to us. Again, thank you to the Chambers and to Bacara. You have an opportunity to compare and contrast the leadership styles of two people. My candidate, my, uh, my opponent served on the Board of Supervisors for eight years. I've been on the council for eight years. And let's compare and contrast. I have provided a leadership to our council where we've gotten great things done by rolling up our sleeves and getting down to the work. I'm proud of the work that my colleagues have done, all the members that have served with me through these eight years. And it's that leadership that I look forward to taking to the Board of Supervisors, a new vision, new leadership, and that's what our constituents are asking for. It's time for change, and I'd hope that you uh, uh, look into my campaign further, look at what I've done in Goleta, talk to me, go on my website, rogersavis.com. Thank you. Ms. Wolf. Uh, thank you, Peter, and, and again, thanks to all of you for being here. Um, sir, your question, if you'd like to talk to me uh, later, I'd be happy to talk to you. Uh, let me just say that um, I, have, I am very proud to have served as um, your supervisor for the past seven years. I'm entering my, my eighth year. We have weathered uh, some tremendous challenges. And together as a board of supervisors, uh, we have made significant progress. Uh, the folks who I represent in the second district know and trust me, and they don't believe it's time for a change in leadership. And the reason is, is because we are getting things done for them. Um, we can't just measure potholes and roads as an indicator of how healthy our community is. Although I have done, through working with our public works, we have made incredible improvements on some of our major thoroughfares, like Cathedral Oaks, 
Las Palmas. We're working right now on Hollister. We've done major, major work on sidewalks and um, on streets in some of the areas in the, in, in, in the neighborhoods. We have worked with our CSA 3 to improve our parks and our maintenance. We've put in a doggy park in Tucker's Grove. We've improved our, um, our, uh, the tennis court in, on uh, Kellogg. You know, the city represents, as this has been said, they have 30,000 residents. I represent over 80,000 people. The budget for the county of Santa Barbara is over $800 million. Now, of that, $200 million is discretionary money that the Board of Supervisors has control over. The rest of that money comes from the state and federal government so that we can implement those programs that um, we have been told that we need to implement. All of those that are related to public health, mental health, social services, our fire department, our sheriff's department, our probation department, the jails, the, the breadth of issues that we deal with are massive. And I have been a supervisor who has been involved in so many aspects of county government, as has been noted from my, um, my committee membership, particularly on the Board of Retirement, the AB 109 implementation, the South Coast uh, County Gang Task Force. I am an involved supervisor. And I want to continue the service uh, to my constituents. And I believe that um, if anyone was to look at the, and I mentioned some of them before, the list of endorsements is quite hefty uh, from organizations to individuals. And again, the reason I have their support is because, not because I have some whimsical idea of being a supervisor, it's because I care and I get the job done. And so for all of those reasons, I'm proud to represent you, and I look forward to serving another four years. And again, thank you very much for being here. I'd now like to introduce Ken Opplinger, President and CEO of the Chamber of Commerce for Santa Barbara Region to make some closing remarks. Ken. Thank you, and thank you all for joining us. I also want to thank uh, Lauren Hansen from the Goleta Water District for joining us as well. We apologize that we did not see you at the beginning. I want to thank Second District Supervisor Janet Wolf and Goleta's uh, City Council Member, Former Mayor Roger Aceves, for joining us. This event has been an outstanding way for us to get to know the candidates, and we're very pleased to also have TV Santa Barbara here to film the event so the community can also see it in its entirety. This event has also allowed the business community on the South Coast to demonstrate our united efforts to make our region a world-class place for business. The Goleta Valley Chamber has been a leader in representing the interests of business with government for many years, and I thank Kristen Miller for allowing us to co-sponsor the event today. This partnership, though, goes far beyond our roles in advocacy and political action. In the last 10 months, we've held joint activities in the areas of networking and community promotion, and we've joined forces to help strengthen our economy through the creation of our economic vitality team. On behalf of my board of directors and the over 900 members of the Chamber of the Santa Barbara Region, we look forward to many more ways that we can collaborate with the Goleta Valley Chamber for the betterment of all. Finally, your task in, this, in relation to this upcoming election is not complete. June 3rd is fast approaching, and I encourage each and every one of you to get out and vote, and to encourage your friends, family, and your employees to vote as well. The last day to register to vote is May 19th, so there's plenty of time to make sure that you exercise what I consider to be your obligation to our community. Again, thank you all for joining us. Best of luck to you. We'll see you at the next event. Please. Please, uh, please join me in thanking our two candidates for their participation today. Thanks very much. This concludes this presentation, but I think the candidates will be around for a little bit for a few minutes more for discussion. Good Thank job. you.